Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm going to do a little talk about the Terran Hydra Destroyer, uh, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, I was probably more excited about this one than the Eagle, uh, which I thought was also really cool, but uh, up until this point, the only ship in the game that could do Surgical Strikes 3 with pilot was the Saturn Science Vessel, which is a 4-3 science vessel, and the pilot seat on it was only Ensign. So you couldn't do any of the fancy pilot stuff like hold together or fly her apart or clean getaway. Uh, and it was just severely limiting to have that be the only ship like that. I really wanted to be able to build a ship that used both surgical strikes as well as some of the more common pilot staples like rhythmic rumble or cold hearted and that kind of thing. So. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, Surgical Strikes build on the Hydra and kind of discuss some pros and cons about it. Uh, and overall, I'm very, very pleased with the ship. Uh, I like the way it looks a lot. I, I, that's kind of up to taste. I'm sure some people will think that my iteration here is ugly, but I really like these new nacelles that you can kind of see into. Uh, on the 10 forward stream, he called it a toaster oven, like you're looking into a hot toaster. <laughs> I can see that. Um, but either way, I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking ship. Uh, and you can use any parts from the Prometheus or Hestia as well. So, uh, jumping into the gear, uh, the way that I used it in the video I uploaded, that big 20 player capture and hold, is how I'm gonna present it here. Uh, but I'll mention a couple of alternatives as I go. So, uh, first of all, in the forward weapons, I have the disruptor, I'm using disruptors, the wide angle, along with three Alachi dual beam banks. Uh, and the main reason for that is purely that these were in my bank and they have been in my bank for a long time unused and I just wanted to put them on something. So uh, don't think that you need to go out and buy some expensive Alachi disruptors or something uh, to make this work. In fact, those new phasers, um, I keep blanking on what they're called, but uh, they do basically the same proc. It's like a small chance for a, a shield pen and an armor pen. So. Um, you could use those and phasers or, or whatever your, your preferred thing is. Uh, and in fact, uh, I actually think that this build would be better with all arrays because um, arrays have that wider firing arc. It makes it a little bit easier to stay on target. And this ship has a relatively slower uh, turn rate of 14, which kind of puts it on par with like the Freedom Frigate. Uh, and people still love the Freedom Frigate. I love the Freedom Frigate with dual beams, but um, it does mean that your sh this ship is just a little bit clunkier to fly than you know if you're used to like the Dimos or the the Jem'Hadar attack ship or whatever, some other kind of fast escort. So uh, if you're having trouble staying on target, then you could use the uh, arrays here instead, and that will help you stay on target a little bit better. Uh, and then I have the PZO Polaron Beam Array, and that is for technical overload. Technical overload works when you use surgical strikes, uh, or beam overload, or rapid fire, but you can see here this electrical damage uh, hit here is really, really powerful. And uh, to kind of elaborate on that, for those of you who don't know, surgical strikes affects both beams and cannons. It's all energy weapons, as opposed to like beam overload only affects beams, Cannon rapid fire only affects, you know, cannons. So that does mean that you can mix and match. Uh, like for example, I have here in my inventory the Terran Task Force beam array and cannons. Uh, I can put the Terran Task Force beam and cannon on the ship here. Uh, and when I hit surgical strikes, they all they both benefit from surgical strikes. But obviously, there's a little bit of a mismatch in the targeting arc. The cannons obviously have a really narrow 45 degree targeting arc. Um, but coupled into that same kind of thing here is the Piezo Polaron uh, comes in a plasma variant, which I also have down here. And if you slot the Polaron array and plasma cannons, or vice versa, the Piezo uh, Polaron cannon and plasma array, doesn't matter, uh, the technical overload will actually trigger twice. So if you hit surgical strikes, and I hover over those weapons, you'll see here's the electrical damage on the array, and here is the electrical damage on the cannons. Now, if you fire them one at a time, like one, and then wait a second, and then fire the next one, it won't trigger twice. You won't get that electrical damage. 
But if you're firing them back to back, like uh, it will trigger back to back. So since I have them both mounted forward here, if I was flying like directly at an enemy uh, and they both fired directly ahead and hit, I would get double technical overloads on that hit. Um, but on the other hand, since the array has a wider firing arc, if I'm flying like this and there's someone off to the side and my array fires and hits them with technical overload and then I turn to face them and the cannon fires, it's probably too late and I won't get that second technical overload hit. So th there's kind of a finesse to, to getting the best out of that. Um, but you could do something crazy like this with all these mismatched cannons or whatever, or you could do like, um, and I might do this later just for fun, uh, but you could slot like seven turrets or, or single cannons and they all would benefit from surgical strikes so uh, you know it's kind of cool with surgical strikes you can experiment with mixing different types uh, that you wouldn't normally use so but uh, just discussing the way that I had it set up for consistency uh, the deflector is the colony deflector I felt the extra crit severity would be useful on a surgical strikes build because that already increases your crit severity uh, in this case by 80% the base damage is less than beam overload, though, um, but you get additional accuracy, crit chance, and crit severity, so kind of some trade-offs there. Uh, and it also doesn't increase the power cost of firing these weapons, uh, which is a nice benefit. But uh, next I have the three-piece competitive set. No surprises there. Most people have already formed their opinion about what set that they're running here, so I don't need to go into too much detail about that. Uh, and then aft, since I'm using disruptors, I have a standard Omni disruptor that I got off the exchange and a Martok disruptor from the mission. The Martok disruptor forms a two-piece with this console. Um, the console gives me some extra power and HP and all that, uh, as well as turn, and also the two-piece is uh, extra crit chance and accuracy. So that's a pretty good free set. If I was using phaser, I probably would use like the inhibiting phaser or a trilithium phaser. Uh, or you know, or w whatever your preference is there. Uh, in experimental weapons, I'm using the Soliton Impeller since I am running a very high amount of engine power, 118 normally. Uh, that does mean that the Soliton Impeller will have 240% haste when I'm using it on this build, so that's a good one. Uh, but also, Graviton Implosion is really good. That new Eagle one is decent, although it would deal less damage on this since I don't have a lot of aux power, um, that kind of thing. So. Uh, and I don't normally talk about devices too much, but uh, I have reactive armor catalysts on here, and I definitely feel like you have to have that on this build uh, because it is a bit more fragile than your standard dogfighter. And um, I guess now is as good as time as any to talk about this. The tactical consoles, you'll notice that I have five uh, colony protomatter infuser consoles. And the reason why I have five of them is when you activate surgical strikes, uh, basically each one of these is a 25% chance to trigger. So you won't always get all five of them. And surgical strikes, it locks out other fire mode abilities like beam overload, uh, beam fire at will, cannon scatter volley, cannon rapid fire. So on a beam overload ship, you would use beam overload plus a cannon ability. So if you had five colony consoles, that is 10 chances at healing. But on this ship, since I'm using surgical strikes, I only get five chances and then I have to wait 15 seconds before I can activate this again. So effectively, this ship has half the amount of healing from colony consoles as a beam overload ship would have. The trade-off, of course, is that surgical strikes hits really hard, you can do the double technical overload thing, uh, and it you know, deals good damage with arrays and all that stuff. Um, but that is the main number one drawback to this build, is that severe reduction in healing. Uh, and going through my other consoles, I have a uh, hostile acquisition, that's for the accuracy and control, as well as a hold. Uh, DPRM is here strictly as a defensive measure, bonus damage resistance and hull regen. Alachi Rift Jump helps me get out of trouble if I'm caught in Psy Spam or whatever. Um, I already mentioned the Martok two-piece console. Uh, hull image refractors for temporary hull. Uh, which works less effectively on this build because the colony consoles only trigger once, like I said, but I still feel like it's worth it. Uh, and bioneural infusion circuits, that is mostly for the crit severity. Since I'm critting a lot with surgical strikes, I felt leaning into severity was the best option. Uh, and similar uh, thought process there, I have the Lorca's fire controls, and this 
um, isn't really for the console itself. It's mainly for the two-piece with the forward dual beam bank, which grants this 25% uh, crit severity buff. Uh, so that two-piece is really, really good. Uh, moving on to my skills, I have Command as my primary and Miracle Worker as secondary, uh, but I really think there's a, a pretty good case to flip those around and run Miracle Worker as primary and Command as secondary, uh, just because of how fragile this ship is. And when you set Miracle Worker as primary, um, you get this incoming healing boost, as well as uh, resistance rating against critical hits. Uh, and the clicky ability, you can only use it every five minutes, but that also increases your max HP and healing. So um, this is a pretty good specialization to have set when you're struggling to stay alive, like this build might encounter. Moving on to traits. Uh, this is a tactical captain, so I have a good day to die. That lets me use this go down fighting for the bonus damage more often. If I were a different captain career, obviously I would choose something different. Uh, Fragment of AI Tech gives me energy damage, cat 1, based on control as well as 50 control. And um, that extra control helps me kind of stay out of trouble on this build. And it increases the duration of stuff like evade target lock. Uh, evade target lock right now uh, makes me untargetable for 9 seconds. Uh, without this trait, it would only be 8 seconds. So I get one more second of untargetability from that. It's not much, but everything adds up on these kind of things. Uh, then crit severity, again, Terran targeting systems. Fresh from r and &R, that helps me use my pilot team and intel team more quickly. As well as engineering and science team, of course, but I also have tactical team on this build. And I'm actually just running all the team abilities. Um, so this is a really beneficial trait for this build. Uh, give your all helps me dodge some incoming damage, again, a survivability measure. Intelligence, agent attache for reducing my captain ability recharges. Pseudo submission for placating people that have me targeted. Obviously, this doesn't work as well against other ships running pilot team because they're immune to this placate. Uh, but it does still help against intel ships like Psy Spammers and Drainers and that kind of thing. Uh, reconstructive Radiation and Secret Command Codes are also on this build. I used those in the last build too. These don't conflict with your temporary hull anymore uh, because of the way that that works, so I'm running both of these. Reconstructive Radiation also clears damage over time effects, which is nice. Uh, and these actually parse really well. I'll, I'll, um, I'll show a parse at the end of the video, but these both seem to be working really well for me. Uh, and then self-modulating fire to pierce shields. If I was a little bit more nervous about dying, I would ditch this and run like redirected armor plating um, or repair crews or redundant antimatter, something that gives me a little bit more uh, resistance, but I like that extra shield pen. Uh, moving on to starship traits, I have uh, Rhythmic Rumble, which is uh, kind of a staple for pilot dogfighter type builds, but since this ship has pilot, of course, uh, I am seeing good benefits from using this. Uh, reduction in weapon power cost and damage resistance, although I am a little slower in this ship than other dogfighters, uh, so my resistance doesn't quite get as high. Uh, and the weapon power cost reduction isn't as important uh, since I'm using surgical strikes and not beam overload. The weapon power cost isn't that drastic, but still really good trait to use defensively. And on a similar defensive measure, uh, I'm using Invincible, which has saved me countless times, especially on a build like this where it's pretty fragile. Uh, basically, if I get hit to this, hit to Zol, um, it allows me two minutes where I can play defensively until this is back up, and then I can be more aggressive again. Uh, for my other traits, I have a Vanguard Specialist. This extends the duration of these various specialist fire modes, uh, including Surgical Strikes. So now Surgical Strikes is a 15-second global cooldown and lasts for 15 seconds, so that basically guarantees full uptime on surgical strikes. Uh, and then I have Temporal Surge, which uh, since I'm using intel abilities anyway, that the crit chance isn't really all that useful in this build. My crit chance is already super high, uh, especially with accuracy overflow and all that stuff. I'm probably at like 90% anyway. Um, it's mostly for the extra speed and uh, that little brief untargetable time lets me reposition. Uh, then I have Weapon Emitter Overdrive. I'm not sure how beneficial this is because uh, like on a Beam Overload build, the extra 50 accuracy from this is really useful for hitting targets. However, on this build, I already get 30 accuracy from Surgical Strikes. Uh, so that makes this trait a little less 
valuable, I think. And the extra crit chance isn't that much, so it probably would be better uh, to ditch that and run something like um, Superior Pedal to Metal. That grants some bonus damage uh, when at full throttle. Uh, or something else. Uh, one of the major drawbacks to Surgical Strikes, by the way, since you can't run other abilities with it, it's like Superior Area Denial. A common trick is that someone will hit Scatter Volley and then use Beam Overload, and the Beam Overload will apply this negative 30 debuff. You can't do that with Surgical Strikes. And the same thing with um, Preferential Targeting. So Preferential Targeting, after you use sc Scatter Volley, then Beam Overload gets this extra 100% damage. So uh, if you are using Beam Overload, then it lets you use these traits that grace, greatly increase the amount of damage that your Beam Overload is doing. Uh, with Surgical Strikes, you don't have that option. So you're kind of looking for stuff that increases all damage, which is why uh, Pedal to Metal is a good one. Uh, I really wish that they would redo the best, um, the best Diplomat. The best Diplomat uh, gives you this increase to bonus damage to Beam Overload and Fire at Will. Uh, but not surgical strikes, which I, which I think is too bad, kind of. But a couple of different options there, depending on, on what you want to do. Uh, and then the last trait that I'm using was the one that I'm the most excited about on this build is Cold Hearted. Finally, surgical strikes and Cold Hearted come together. Uh, that negative 50 damage resistance debuff is huge, uh, especially with surgical strikes landing those big hits uh, and cutting through shields and all that stuff. So this is a great trait to combine with, with surgical strikes. Uh, in my reputation, I'm running the same two Dyson ones. I usually run bonus resistance for myself. Uh, and then on the offensive side, 20% crit severity. And I am running Counterstroke again for 40% crit severity. Like I said, my crit chance is so high that I'm leaning really heavily into surgical strikes to try to maximize those critical hits that I'm getting. Uh, and then I have Viral Engine Overload. When critting, I knock somebody's engines offline. That's really helpful offensively. And then for some reason I have Precision on here, but I'm not actually sure if that's the best option. I probably uh, would run, you could do Tyler's Duality for more crit chance, or um, something else maybe defensive since I was struggling to stay alive, like Critical Deflection or uh, Automated Proto Matter Conduits, Hull Regen. Those are both really good defensive traits that would help keep this ship you know, going uh, when dealing with incoming damage. Uh, moving on to my stations, uh, the seating is really great. You have these two universal seats at the top, uh, and then the rest, really there's no wasted space here. So uh, the tactical seat, normally this would be a wasted slot. Um, something that confuses people who are new to PvP or, or coming from PvE is that having too many tactical abilities is a total waste. Uh, and having a tactical commander seat is kind of a detriment to a lot of ships. Like, um, I think the Lafayette uh, Recon Destroyer is a really cool ship, right? This is a cool ship. Uh, and it has this commander, um, it doesn't show it in the store here, but it has this commander tactical seat and it just really limits what you can do with it. Uh, on this ship, though, the commander seat, uh, it's tactical, but it's shared with Intel. So you actually could run uh, like, I'm going to show Surgical Strikes build here, but you could run uh, Beam Overload build instead and maybe do like, I don't know, something on a carrier wave or something like that. And that's like a more traditional Beam fighter kind of build. You know, so there, there's all this potential for, uh, for a ship like this because you don't have any wasted seating. So uh, the way that I have it set up though, Surgical Strikes 3, of course, the main crux of this build. Uh, and then I have Evade Target Lock to kind of get out of trouble. Intel Team 2, which grants me a lot of perception as well as stealth for myself. And Tactical Team. Tactical, tactical Team, um, it distributes shields and during the five seconds of the remove tactical debuffs, it also clears the debuff caused by enemy attack pattern Lambda. And, and well, let me just jump over to that seat now. Attack pattern Lambda, the... Um, for me, it grants perception and accuracy, which is why I'm using it and it's great but it also negatively affects enemies. It lowers their uh, perception and accuracy. And lowering someone's perception, if I'm using Intel team 
and I lower their perception, in this case by 450, it's basically the equivalent of giving myself 450 stealth. So if someone, if I'm fighting another ship like mine that's using both Lambda and Intel team and maybe Exodus, um, tactical team clears that Lambda debuff and would help me target them a lot better because I don't have to worry about this negative 450 perception thing or the negative accuracy for that matter. So that's why that's there. Uh, and then I have Hold Together 1, it's another heal. Uh, when you're at full throttle, 1800 HP over 8 seconds, as well as good damage resist and clears the hazard debuff. And it doesn't matter what your actual ship speed is, like see if I hit emergency and engines, I'm physically moving faster, but I'm still getting the same 1800 uh, hull. It's based on what you have the throttle set to in quarter increments. And in PvP, since you're usually at full throttle anyway, or at least you should be at full throttle if you're trying to heal and run away, uh, that's a good option. You also could run, uh, if you wanted to be more aggressive, you could run like Fly Her Apart to add more bonus damage. Or uh, I don't have it on this bridge officer, but Clean Getaway. Uh, clean Getaway is really good, gets you out of trouble, um, and, you know, kind of speed boost there. Uh, and then in the Ensign slot, I'm running Pilot Team 1. Uh, and that's for the immunity to placate, immunity to movement debuffs, and all that stuff. Uh, in the science seat, uh, I have Photonic Officer 1 and Science Team. That's a pretty standard setup. Uh, if you're willing to risk the uh, Boimler effect being your only uh, cooldown option, you could swap out the Photonic Officer with something else, maybe like Tractor Beam Repulsors. Tractor Repulsors pushes away parasitic ice for example, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting stuck in it. Or you could even use like Hazard Emitters, which is kind of a smaller heal on this build since I have such low aux power, but you know, you could use it at the right time and it clears Hazard debuffs and all that stuff. So there's a couple of options for that seat. Uh, the Universal Seats, I'm using both of those as engineers. Uh, so I'm cycling both Emergency Power to Engines 1 and Emergency Power to Shields 3. Um, that helps me stay alive and keep my speed up. And then I have Auxiliary Destructural Integrity Field. I have a Placate Duty Officer that also gives me continuous healing and damage resistance. Um, but I also could use like Oxidamp, for example, immunity to disable and repel uh, and all that stuff. And the Ensign Seat is just Engineering Team. That's for repairing my disabled subsystems or whatever engineering debuffs uh, like Oxisif Placate or Viral Engines Overload. My duty officers, I've got the, uh, so the core three are here, con officer to reduce uh, evasive maneuvers, the damage control officer for placates, and the warp core engineer to clear debuffs. And then I'm also running a 20 of 47, since I have both engineering and pilot, that gives me some additional accuracy. And uh, this is not armor penetration, the tooltip is a lie here, this is hull penetration. So it's not nearly as powerful as it seems, but that 40 accuracy is the main reason for running this anyway. Uh, and then I kind of struggled to come up with uh, duty officers to use, so I'm using this uh, crit severity when firing energy weapons uh, bridge officer, or duty officer. This seems to work decently well, but like ones that I use on beam overload ships like this beam overload shield penetration duty officer don't work on this build because I'm using surgical strikes. And there aren't many duty officers that strictly affect surgical strikes, so um, you could do a more defensive uh, duty officer, something, you know, like, and that's kind of what I did here, this fabrication engineer, uh, engineering and pilot, a chance to activate an extra auxiliary to structural integrity field. And uh, basically, like, if I use emergency to engines or engineering team, I have a chance at activating, let me see, there we go, so I hit Lambda there and I got a free Oxa Structural. The chances are really, really low, so it doesn't happen very often, but um, the extra Structural Integrity field here also benefits from this Placate. So since I have my own copy of it, uh, and I have a chance of getting a second one, I actually can Placate two people in a row, because this Placate only affects a single attacker. So that's it's neat. I don't think it's like game breaking or game changing really because uh, like if someone is attacking me and they hit engineering team and they attack me, neither of the placates will affect them anyway. So I don't know. I just was running out of ideas for duty officers and that's kind of what I stuck in there. So 
Uh, let me bring up the parse because I, I do want to talk about this on this build and the the reason is because if I go into my combat analysis reports uh, and look at my uh, damage here uh, and let's go to uh, first of all let's let's look at my healing so I said that the uh, proto matter consoles uh, they they work but they're not doing as well as on a beam overload ship um, but secret command codes is performing pretty well and so is constructive radiation I mean that's that's a good amount of healing um, 85,000 and 71,000 respectively for traits it's good to you know just trying to stay alive I did actually use image refractors on this uh, for a little bit so you could tell I was really in trouble anytime I hit image refractors that definitely means I'm in a lot of trouble because uh, you know I screwed something up but like reactive armor catalysts I used those a couple of times but I really didn't get much healing from them um, but then if I look at like for comparison uh, Q-tip cephalopod here he was on my team fighting the same enemies that I was fighting but in a beam overload fighter instead so really similar build similar combat situation same build and you look at his and you look he's got double the amount of healing from uh, the colony console and since he's got hold together three he's getting a ton of healing from hold together uh, and uh, oh and he's a science captain so he gets some extra stuff but you you can just see like he doesn't even need to run secret command codes or whatever because he's got way more healing with these two abilities than I'm able to get from from mine and uh, yeah I didn't get nearly as much from hold together one I, I still got a decent amount from it but the other valuable thing of comparing like this is if I go to my damage two. Uh, and these are the enemy players on the other team that I'm shooting. So there you go. Um, and let's look at just a single weapon that's common between both of our ships. So I'm going to look at the Disruptor Wide Angle Dual Beam Bank under Surgical Strikes 3. And if we look at the damage that I'm dealing here, um, and I, I don't want to bore you with too much math, math but um, I already kind of went through this parse with the calculator. And if you add the total amount of damage that I dealt, versus the number of attacks that I had uh, and divide that uh, across everyone here. I'm just going to do Theron uh, alone here, actually, just so that we have this comparison. So at 163,290 damage in six attacks, that's an average of 27,000 damage per hit. And that's not base damage, that's the actual damage I'm dealing to his ship, you know, which is actually valuable. If I go and I look at Cephalopod, and we'll go down to his wide angle weapon under overload and also look at it against Theron. Under overload he dealt 241,895 sorry 241,895 divided by seven attacks. His average damage was 34,500. So his average damage with beam overload is higher than mine with surgical strikes uh, using the same weapon and very similar builds. And my point, uh, I guess my point is this. It's not that Surgical Strikes isn't a useful ability. Like I said, you can mix cannons. You get the double technical overloads. There's all these things that you can do with it. But especially if you're just starting out or getting into PvP or whatever, uh, Beam Overload is still the way to go. Because in, in this example, like I'm showing, I'm dealing less damage than a Beam Overload ship and I have half the healing that the beam overload ship does. So as long as that's the case, that kind of, that's a big penalty to surgical strikes, I think. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, obviously, you know, surgical strikes has other benefits. It deals, uh, surgical strikes deals better damage when you have it on arrays, for example. So like if I were gonna build this as more of like, um, say I did all arrays and then as a trait, uh, maybe instead of like pedal to metal, I slotted something like plot armor. Do, 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 there. So I've got this extra healing from that. So now I'm more survivable and uh, I'm dealing more damage to targets around me. Just But it's just like continuous, consistent damage. It's not like the big one hits that a beam overload build can do. And part of that also, this might change over time because uh, like I know for sure... Um, that this beam overload build that I'm comparing to is probably running stuff like preferential targeting or superior area denial, things that can only work on beam overload builds. So using surgical strikes, I can't use those traits and it does limit the damage potential that I can get with a build like this. So 
that's just something to keep in mind long term. Um, either way, really, really loving the ship so far. It's a lot of fun to fly, and uh, and I'm glad that we finally got a, uh, a full Intel ship with Pilot. I mean, it's been a long time coming. Uh, so either way, thanks for watching, and have a good one. See you next time.